And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, this is part one of a two-part video on the Lieutenant Packs for Descent, or at least the first ten of them. Uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about these packs. Now, Lieutenant Pack comes with a miniature that's in the game, and it comes with a deck of cards and some cards that are called Agent Cards. And I'll talk about those in a second. But what I want to do is in the first part of the video, I'm just going to talk about what you get in these packs and how they incorporate into the game and my thoughts on that. Then I'm going to take this, the second video, we're going to take a look at the 10 different characters, give some brief overviews of each. So if you're looking for that, you want to head there. But when you get these packs, they come in blister packs. And when you open the pack, like I said, you get a monster. Sometimes it's a big monster like this one or the dragon. Sometimes it's a smaller monster, but they're all really cool because one of the things that these lieutenant packs are for is simply to replace the lieutenants in the campaigns. Whether it's from the original series or from one of the campaigns from the, series, the, the expansions, there are many different lieutenants who show up. They're big, bad monsters, and it's always driven me nuts, as I'm sure it's driven most Descent fans nuts, that, that Fantasy Fight gave us tokens to use for these, these, these uh, overlords, these lieutenants. Here I am marching around these giant dragons, and then I have a token boss moving around. It's much cooler to use these models, and I think these models are very well done. We'll take a closer look at them in just a second. But the game also comes with these agent cards. Now these agent cards look very similar. In fact, let's let's do a quick comparison of them. So here you can see Splig. He's from the very first uh, campaign, the Descent Second Edition. Uh, some big goblin lieutenant dude. And at the top here are his lieutenant cards. Now lieutenant cards and agent cards are somewhat different. Agent cards mean Splig shows up in someone else's campaign. I can't use him as an agent in, well, the same campaign where he's a lieutenant. But let's say I'm off fighting some dragon somewhere. Splig might show up. Now, lieutenants have actual stats on them, and they can carry relics. Agents can't do that. And you can see there might be some other differences between the cards. I've compared them, and there's minor differences. For one thing, yeah, Splig has a not me uh, ability. This guy has a him instead. They're essentially the same except for Splig has to roll for his. This one kind of happens automatically if you're next to it. Now how do you get these agent cards into play? Well, before we do that, let's take a look again what comes in the pack. First of all, we have the miniatures. Here are the miniatures for the first 10. Guys, you can see they range from fairly small to these big ones. This dragon itself is a really beautiful miniature. And these guys are just begging to be painted. You then also have some fortune threat tokens here. These tokens will be used throughout the game. And if you buy multiple lieutenant packs, you'll have more of these and you'll ever know what to do. And then here's all the different cards. Um, these are the lieutenant cards. But the rest of these here are all the different guys that you come with a level one, level two um, for each of the characters. And then they also come with a 10 card plot deck. So with Splig here, for example, I'll get the Splig character, I'll get the two different cards, and then I get ten different plot cards that I can use over the course of the campaign. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have these plot cards and they're going to be face down in front of me. As the game progresses, I'm going to get different of these threat tokens. There's different ways to get threat tokens. You get one every time you kill an enemy hero, although you can only get one per hero per encounter. So you can get four per encounter. You get one at the end of every encounter, an extra one if you win, and you can always trade in an experience point for three of them. So as you can see, you're going to get a decent amount of them, but you're going to need them. To use a threat card, you're going to pay attention to a couple numbers on these cards. Some of the cards are free for you to take, like this Spirited Retreat, but Feral Instincts, you can see here, has a cost of one threat token. So when I buy a threat card, for example, maybe I want this Rated Armory, that's going to cost four threat tokens. I pay those back to the bank and put the card face up in front of myself. To use the threat card, I will have to pay this much at the bottom, but instead of paying this much to the bank, like you do when you buy it, instead you pick the hero, or one of the heroes, uh, who has the least of these, and you're going to flip them over and put that on the hero as fortune tokens. The hero can use those to 
re-roll dice to get to get rid of fatigue and take an extra action if they have enough of them. So you want to be careful about giving too many of those out. But of course the ability that you get from playing these cards can be quite useful. For example here, exhaust this card at the start of your turn and choose a monster group. Place this card near that group's monster card while it's exhausted. Each monster in that group gets one free surge. Uh, to each of its attack and one shield to each of its defense. If that group has the Wilderness Monster trait, they also get one attack. And so this will unexhaust every turn, but every turn you can ex exhaust it and use it against someone else. But it's going to cost, again, four to buy and two to use in each of the campaigns. Now, there are some. there is one card in every set that is Summon the, the Agent. So this one costs three to buy, two to use, and Splig comes out. When he comes out, I can run him around. He, he will replace someone. In this instance, he replaces a master monster in a chosen group. And then Splig will run around, and after he's defeated, the card goes back to my deck, and I'll have to buy it again. So I have to be careful. I mean, you could get the same agent out multiple times, that I'll be back gadget type thing, but you're going to pay for it. And so that's essentially all this that's in these decks. Okay, the question here is, should you get these? Now, for any Descent fanatic like myself, we were going to get these anyway, right? I mean, because we wanted to use these miniatures. If the pack had just had the miniature in, we would have been happy. And I'm really kind of thankful that Fantasy Flight kind of went above and beyond. They, I mean, really, they could have just put these miniatures in the pack and we'd been like, yeah, I want to use Bulgarath in my campaign. And I, I like the models for these. They look exactly like the pictures. They're really cool. And like, I'm sitting here thinking these need to be painted. Having them as an agent is an interesting idea. And I was really excited about it. I was less excited when I read the rules and realized that I could only use one plot deck per campaign. And the campaigns in Descent aren't short. They're going to take a while to play. So here I'm sitting with 10 of these plot decks and I'm only going to use, I'm not, I mean, let's be honest, I haven't used them all. I mean, it's, it's, I would have to be playing hundreds of hours to get them all into play, but I have the option of putting them all into play. And I can also throw these cards out sometimes when I just want to do a one-off against some opponents and I want to give them a big bad guy to fight and I think I can pick one of these and throw that out there. I do like these and I will always play with them, but I do not find the plot decks essential to the gameplay of the set. They're interesting, but I can see how they can get like, oh, what's going on again? Now the heroes like the fortune tokens. When they get the fortune tokens, like, yeah, let me re-roll those dice and things. And it is much better. Even the heroes like the fact when you put this down rather than a token, because it feels more satisfying to beat this. And for the overlord, it's more satisfying to move it than to move a token. So I like the descent packs. For comparison amongst the first 10, uh, check it, like I said, my second video. Anyway, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and man, I do love Descent. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Leave it open! <laughs> <laughs>